the rise and fall of the Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall physically separated East and West Berlin and also served as a symbolic separation internationally between communism and capitalism. Construction of the Berlin Wall began overnight on August 13, 1961, at the direction of the political powers in East Berlin. For 29 years, the people of East Berlin were held captive by communism, living in fear and oppression, and continuously looking for ways to escape. During U.S. President Ronald Reagan's speech, he commanded USSR Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall. The Berlin Wall's deconstruction symbolized the end of the Cold War and much of communism throughout the world. Although relations between the Soviet Union and the United States had been strained in the years before World War II, the U.S.-Soviet alliance of 1941 to 1945 was marked by a great degree of cooperation and was essential to securing the defeat of Nazi Germany. Without the remarkable efforts of the Soviet Union on the Eastern Front, the United States and Great Britain would have been hard-pressed to score a decisive military victory over Nazi Germany. After World War II, Europe was in need of reconstruction physically, financially, and politically. Europe was divided into numerous sectors, Western Bloc, American Zone, British Zone, French Zone, a Communist Bloc slash the Soviet Zone, with Berlin central to the blocs and zones. By the 1960s, the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe was experiencing a brain drain where good scientists and scholars were leaving for Western Europe and the U.S. Construction of the Berlin Wall began overnight, August 13, 1961. The East German government constructed the Berlin Wall to keep people from leaving the Soviet sector of East Berlin and thus all of Eastern Europe. The U.S. saw the wall go up, as did the British and French, but decided not to start World War III in order to stop the construction of the wall. This was the Cold War, a standoff between communist and capitalist nations. The Cold War was also evident in the United Nations. Shortly after the war, the U.S. had proposed the Baruch Plan designed to halt nuclear development, but the Soviet Union felt it unfair to freeze conditions when the U.S. only had a nuclear bomb. In turn, greater tensions. So the Union vetoed the Baruch Plan and the nuclear arm races began. Around 2.7 million people left East Germany and East Berlin between 1949 and 1961, causing increasing difficulties for the leadership of the East German Communist Party. Around half of this steady stream of refugees were young people under the age of 25. Roughly half a million people crossed the sector borders in Berlin each day in both directions, enabling them to compare living conditions on both sides. In 1960 alone, around 200,000 people made a permanent move to the West. East Germany was on the brink of social and economic collapse. In the early morning hours of August 13, 1961, temporary barriers were put up at the border separating the Soviet sector from West Berlin, and the asphalt and cobblestones on the connecting roads were ripped up. Police and transport police units, along with members of workers' militias, stood guard and turned away all traffic at the sector boundaries. Over the next few days and weeks, the coils of barbed wire strung along the border to West Berlin were replaced by a wall of concrete slabs and hollow blocks. This was built by East Berlin construction workers under the close scrutiny of East German border guards. The East German government had the front entrances and ground floor windows bricked up. Residents could get to their apartments only via the courtyard, which was in East Berlin. From one day to the next, the wall separated streets, squares, and neighborhoods from each other and severed public transportation links. On 25 October 1961, American and Soviet tanks faced off against each other at the Friedrichstrasse border, crossing used by foreign nationals, Checkpoint Charlie. Because East German border guards had attempted to check the identification of representatives of the Western Allies as they entered the Soviet sector, 
In the American view, the Allied right to move freely throughout all of Berlin had been violated. For 16 hours, the two nuclear powers confronted each other from a distance of just a few meters, and the people of that era felt the imminent threat of war. The next day, both sides withdrew. In the years to come, the barriers were modified, reinforced, and further expanded, and the system of controls at the borders were was perfected. The wall running through the city center, which separated East and West Berlin from one another, was 26 miles long. The border fortifications separating West Berlin from the rest of East Berlin were 65 miles long, 12 feet tall, and possessed over 300 watch tiles, towers. Well over 100,000 citizens of East Germany tried to escape across the interior German border or the Berlin Wall between 1961 and 1988. More than 600 of them were shot and killed by East German border guards or died in other ways. During their escape attempt, at least 136 people died at the Berlin Wall alone between 1961 and 1989. A second fence was built in 1962. The section between the, the wall and fence became known as the Death Strip. Even though the wall was overseen by armed guards, attack dogs, and barbed wire, many East Germans tried to escape to the west. Some used cars as battering ramps through the concrete walls and fencing. Before windows were filled with bricks and mortar, families would dangle their loved ones from second, third, or fourth floors onto the streets of West Berlin. Others took the ground and tried to burrow beneath the walls and others to the skies in hot air balloons. We welcome change and openness, for we believe that freedom and security go together, that the advance of human liberty the advance of human liberty can only strengthen the cause of world peace. There is one sign that the Soviets can make that would be unmistakable, that would advance dramatically the cause of freedom and peace. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, Come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. On November 9, 1989, as the Cold War began to thaw across Eastern Europe, the spokesman for East Berlin's Communist Party announced a change in his city's relations with the West. Starting at midnight that day, he said citizens of the East Germany were free to cross the country's borders. East and West Berliners flocked to the wall drinking beer and champagne and chanting Taroth, which means open the gate. At midnight, they flooded through the checkpoints. More than 2 million people from East Berlin visited West Berlin that weekend to participate in a celebration that was, one journalist wrote, the greatest street party in the history of the world. People used hammers and picks to knock away chunks of the wall. They became known as Mausbach, or wall woodpeckers. While cranes and bulldozers pulled down sections, section after section, soon the wall was gone and Berlin was united for the first time since 1945. Only today, one Berliner spray painted on a piece of the wall is the war really over. The reunification of East and West Germany was made official on October 3rd, 1990, almost one year after the fall of the Berlin Wall.